what's good my fellow destined ones in today's video i'm about to make you the most broken sage you could possibly be in black myth wukong let's get straight into it this is going to get you extremely overpowered very quickly to destroy any and every boss in this game seriously first things first the setup you're going to need to go and get this right here the plague bane gourd this is going to be a, not necessarily a secret boss, but a certain quest line with a little boy and a drum is going to send you down a well where you're going to fight this boss. Once you fight the boss and open up the chest, you are going to get this gourd. Now, the reason why we want this gourd is because of its ability. The health recovery is half, which kind of hurts, but the attack is increased for a short amount of time. However, with the drinks and the soaks, you can basically make this thing completely broken and overpowered. The lamb brew drink, which you get right here in chapter two, will allow you to get 20% max health for a brief moment and slowly recovers 25% of max health over time. And then the soaks, the celestial lotus seed, it just increases that recovery over time which you're going to always get yourself almost to full and it doesn't really matter whether you're at full or not because your enemy is going to die regardless but you can see exactly how you can negate the negative effects of the plague bane gourd by using this drink and this soak now let's go ahead and get you that gourd real quick in order to start down that quest line there's a specific place we need to travel to you need to be in the chapter two zone, of course, yellow wind ridge, drop down to the yellow wind formation and the wind sealed gate. Once you've made it to this point in the story, all you have to do is run over here to the left. There's gonna be like these little small ninja enemies, this guy right here, hella annoying. Go ahead and take them out yeah there should be about three of them but anyways you're gonna come right over here to the left what i say i knew there was another one nobody has time for you bro there's another one and where's your bestie all right once you make short work of those little guys right here over in this corner is going to be the Taoist. This is the best spirit in the game, period. You can't argue. He's one of my favorite spirits, I guess, so that's kind of biased. But once you get his ability, yeah, it's going to bring this whole build together. So go ahead and beat him down. He does regenerate when you fight him, which is kind of annoying. Not kind of. It's extremely annoying. But once you finally take him out and you get his spirit, you're good to go. From this point, however, we're not done yet. You then want to travel back out here across the bridge. There's going to be an enemy on the opposite side. Go ahead and freeze this man up. I think he's facing the other direction. So he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Sit down. And then once you take out that man right there, you want to come over here to the left. This is going to be the little boy's village. You go inside the village, the screen is going to get all foggy or whatever, and you'll ring or you'll beat on the drum. Once you beat on the drum, you have to go to the next zone. So we'll make our way back over to the gate. All right. The next location that we have to go to is going to be in Chapter 2 once again. It's going to be the Wind Rest Hamlet. You're basically looking for a village. When you find the village, the little boy is going to speak to you and then you can play the drum again. When you get to the Wind Rest Hamlet, don't cross the bridge. You want to turn around and go this way. Head down the path. There's going to be some items that you can collect if you want them. Of course, there's going to be some enemies. But in this village, walk around for a little bit and eventually the little boy will start talking to you once again. I think it's over here in this area. Yeah. You could walk around here. If he hasn't spoken to you just yet, then you could come around over to this side, walk around in here and over in that village over there. But after you've walked around for a little bit, 
and he eventually starts speaking to you again, ring the drum and you'll be good to go. Once you've rung the drum, rung the drum, once you've beat the drum again for the second time, you want to go to the final location so that we can go ahead and wrap this up. If the drum didn't work over there, which I think it should, you might want to come over here to that side. You can bust through this gate and you can ring the drum over here. But I think that previous area should work for you. Regardless, just walk around in this village for a little bit and the boy is guaranteed to speak to you. All right. So you just got to move around. There is a lot of different enemies here. So just be mindful of that when you're here. But this is his old village, basically. Or it's at least a stomping ground that he used to be at. So now that we've walked around this village and all the different locations where the little boy may speak to you, let's go back to the shrine and go over to the last location. All right, for the final destination, you want to go to the Sandgate Village. Go down to the Valley of Despair. Once you make it over to the Valley of Despair Shrine, you're good to go. Turn around. This is the location where you had the double boss fight. You want to travel up here to the right. There's going to be all of those rats that were shooting at you earlier. And you want to kind of run towards their direction. So. You have that rat over there and those rats up there. Ignore all of them. Have them kill each other. <laughs> or at least try to kill you. You want to hop over this house onto the other side. You might take a little bit of fall damage, but it's all right. And you want to run straight back here. Now, in chapter one, there was a horse. And if you spoke to him, he might be right here at this pillar. But I don't think he's necessary for this quest. Anyways, break through and head right over here around the corner. And congratulations. You're going to ring or beat on a drum for the final time. And then you're going to head down into this well once you reach the bottom of the well you're going to have a boss fight that boss is going to give you an ability which is going to be a brand new spirit it should be this guy right here the mad tiger this mad tiger skill is okay it's not amazing it makes it seem like it's practically amazing and you would think how hard he was that it's going to be amazing but not nah, it's it's all right it's all right but that's not why you're there you want the gourd that is sitting inside the chest, so congratulations, you're good to go. Now, a couple of tips about that guy. The best way to take him out is to use the cloud ability. So you want to go over to self-advance, jump into your spells, go over to alterations, and yes, you want cloud step and everything about it. To bait him when he's about to basically grab you or tackle you, is a great idea he's gonna do it a lot and it's a one shot if he does it especially if you're doing this early in the game but using the cloud step baiting him to a zone and then slapping him is the fastest way to destroy his health another ability that i used was immobilized when i had it i don't use it anymore but it definitely works on him if you have it you know tricked out a little bit so that you can get some extra damage smash stance and using this right here, the focus point and the skyfall strike is definitely the best way to blast through his health. Now, once you've destroyed that man's life, you're pretty much good. You have your gourd. Now, in this zone, you want to go ahead and get the lamb brew drink. That's over in the beginning of the entire zone. It's literally just sitting at a shrine waiting for you to pick it up. But once you've received that, we're pretty much good. You're locked in. You have one of the best drinks and the best gourd in the game. Now let's make you even more powerful. All right, our next location is gonna be this right here, the Squall Hideout. I got a full blown guide about this area. This is gonna be our farming area where you're gonna get a bunch of will, a bunch of rare items. You could beat down the enemies here to get mine cores. This isn't like the best farming spot, but you can get mine cores mine courts you can get mine cores from the enemies here 
and it's just a great place to farm up a bunch of sparks. Now, we're not worried about none of that today. What you want to do is there's a vendor down here. If you've already completed his quest line, then you're good to go. If you haven't, then go ahead and peep this video. That's going to explain the entire process to you. But you basically want to run right back here and grab this merchant over here, the man in stone. Go to purchase and you want to grab this, the iron pellet. This pellet is absolutely amazing because when you use your gourd, you're no longer going to be interrupted by incoming attacks and you take considerable damage reduction, which is just absolutely broken because we just picked up one of the best gourds in the game and we added lamb brew to make it even more broken. So I guess you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You turn yourself into an invincible sage or god mode pretty much. Now, with all of that in play, make sure you run back over to a shrine and put that on your gourd. I currently don't have it on there. So you want to come over to brew. Go into your soaks. Go down into this one, which is your iron pellet. And you're good. Now, it's a balancing game. If you're not really having too much trouble or you're not struggling with dodging, then you don't necessarily need the iron pellet. It's better to use the celestial lotus seed for the extra recovery. But if you're really struggling or you don't really know the boss fight just yet, using the iron pellet to make sure that you completely interrupt all attacks and you get that damage reduction, yeah. It's kind of crazy. Now, with that being said, there is going to be a point in the game where you can go back to the Shin Monkey in Chapter 1 and you can upgrade your gourd or you can upgrade your drinks so that you can get a second soak slot. And that is when you break the game entirely. But I'm still trying to look for a great way to farm the worm that he needs. Anyways, now that you have the Taoist Monk, you have that drink, that soak, and everything that you possibly could ever want. There's one more item that really makes this entire thing pop, but you're going to find that in Chapter 3. It's the Enhanced Tiger Subduing Pellets. There's actually a chest on your way to the... I'll just say on your way to the small Buddha guy that eats the watermelon in that cutscene. You're going to find him eventually, and when you do... You're going to go through a whole entire shrine and on your way to him before you see him at the pavilion or the gazebo. I don't I think that's what it's called, the gazebo. You actually want to backtrack until a chest that is going to have this inside of it. It's enhanced tiger subduing pellet recipe. Once you have this, you're stacking so much damage. It's insane. Now, I'm pretty sure that this does not stack on top of this tiger subduing pellets. But I haven't been able to prove that just yet. Anyways, we'll pop that so we got a boost for a long amount of time off jump. Secondly, we got this man right here. We'll go ahead and pop our Taoist. We'll take a sip of our gourd. And you're done. Whatever you hit is getting melted. Absolutely melted, okay? This setup on a boss deletes all the bosses in the game, no matter who it is. If they take physical damage, they're going to die. If you immobilize them first, they're going to die even faster. It's just broken. This is the greatest setup and one of the best physical DPSing, I guess you would say, builds in the game so far. I love it to death and I hope you enjoy it. If you like what we do here in the channel, make sure you smash that like button and sub to the channel so that you don't ever miss out on all of my tips, tricks, guides, and so much more coming in for Black Myth Wukong. This is your boy M of M Sage D, but for now though, I'm out of here.